compulsive disorder, an anxiety disorder in which a person feels trapped in repetitive, persistent thoughts, obsessions, and repetitive, ritualized behaviors, compulsions, designed to reduce anxiety. Have you ever gone into the bathroom at a restaurant or at an event and you see somebody in there washing their hands like, you know, 60, 60 times, like, and they don't leave? Like, you, you know, you do your thing for a couple of seconds and then you leave, and, but they're just like constantly there. And then they go over to the dryer and then they go back and then they. Or, 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 watch this. Somebody every couple of minutes is putting on hand sanitizer. You guys haven't seen that before? Yeah, yeah. Every five minutes. Like, what did you do? What did you do in between the last five minutes that you could have got, you know, the black plague? You know, what, what, what could have happened? What could have happened just within the last four minutes that makes you need to put on some more pre -oral? I had a professor last, <coughs> last semester. He had a phobia of chalk. <laughs> and so I, all the time, he said it was all the time he had to sanitize. And it was like every second put in sanitizer in his hand. <laughs> Check this out. Here's the deal. You're going to see this on the final. The person understands or does not understand the ritual behavior is senseless. All right? They do understand. It doesn't make sense. They know they're acting out, but they're trapped. You guys get that? Mm -hmm. Circle that in the definition. They're trapped. It's not unconscious behavior. They know what they're doing. Alright? Mood disorders. The difference between major depression and the blues. Everybody has the blues. Major de depression is a mood disorder involving disturb disturbances. Oops, sorry. <coughs> in three areas. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So just go a little bit slower on this slide. Okay, so you can write it down. A mood disorder involving disturbances in four different areas. The first one is what? The, third, the second one is what? The third one is what? The fourth one is what? Okay, watch. Watch what I try. So if Khaled comes to me and says, I think, I think I'm clinically depressed. And he's only having disturbances emotionally and behaviorally. But he's not tired. And he's not having cognitive dysfunctional thoughts. He can't be clinically depressed. In order to be clinically depressed, you need all four. Period. You can have tendencies, that makes it a tendency. But in order for the disorder to be diagnosed or selected or cited, all four have to be present. You guys get that? So the first one's what? Second. Third. Four. Good. So I'm sure you all have probably wondered, am I depressed? Am I am I am I Am I depressed? You're only depressed if, if you're jacked up in all four of these areas. Okay? Wow. And there's a definition in the DSM for what jacked up is. All right? <laughs> yes. Well, I think that, um, when it says thoughts of hopelessness, is that like contemplating suicide? Yes, so it can be. Suicidal ideations is a form of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. That's extreme hopelessness. Okay? I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose, I can't win, I'm not going to be successful. There's been different ranges of right. Bipolar, used to be called manic depressive. Bipolar means opposite ends of the polar, polar system, polar spectrum, the opposite ends of the spectrum. Right. Bipolar, one minute you're really high, next minute you're really depressed. A mood disorder in which episodes of depression and mania, that's why we used to call it manic depressive, excessive euphoria occur. All right? Episodes of depression, high depression. I mean, low depression and high euphoria. Origins of depression. The vulnerability stress model of depression. This is the Upsetting events lead us to feel vulnerable. All right? The 
upsetting events lead to unhappiness, temporary unhappiness. And if we don't manage the trauma or the feelings or the thoughts constructively, we end up in a low place. Long term. All right? Something happens, it affects the mood, and the way that we process is going to a low place. It's okay to go there for a second. It's not okay to go there for months and months and months and months and months. Okay? Vulnerability stress models approaches that emphasize how individual vulnerability to interact with external stressors or circumstances to produce specific mental disorders such as depression. Origins of depression. There are four major contributing factors that lead to depression. You all have you all have the PowerPoint, so I'm gonna start moving really quick. What's that? I know, but you have the book. <laughs> see that's see, see Chantel, that's the reason why a lot of professors don't like to teach this way, because they don't want you to become dependent on me and slides. And, and PowerPoint pass outs, they want you to become dependent on reading the text and you knowing what you read and reading what you know. But if I give you information and if I give you slides and PowerPoints, there's some professors that don't do PowerPoints. I don't want you guys to be dependent on me, I want you to be dependent on your own intellectual prowess so that means you have to read the chapter because the slides are coming from the chapter. Make sense? Cool. So number one, genetic predisposition, violence, loss of important relationships, and cognitive habits. Genetics, violence, loss of relationships, and, and cognitive habits. Make sense? Genetic predispositions. Major depression is moderately irritable. Genes must be involved for some individuals. So, here's a question that's going to come up on the final. Studies have shown that major depression can be linked to heredity. True or false? Mm -hmm. Studies have shown that major major depression can be linked to genes and heredibility. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, heredity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, genes must be involved. All right. It's controversial, but there's more evidence that show that there's more of a link and a trend that can be identified. Okay. It's not 100% conclusive. But there is strong evidence that show mental and emotional disorders, mood disorders, personality disorders, so on and so forth, can be linked. Right. Violence and pre parental neglect. Repeated experience with violence that can lead to depression. If the persons that love you the most are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is giving you love and attention, then the human being can respond a particular way. Okay? If you don't get it from where you're supposed to get it, then we'll reach out and get it in the wrong way. Sometimes that can be loving on ourselves. Sometimes that can be isolating, isolating from others, isolating from relationships. That can be, there are all kinds of different ways in which we process neglect. Domestic violence and childhood abuse. All factors that can lead to depression. Oftentimes when you see sociopaths and psychopaths and they do an assessment or they do an investigative study of the person that blew up the building or cut off the heads of 14 people or said they, they had childhood maltreatment issues. 
they were either abused or neglected, and so they lived their lives acting out, trying to get the attention in the wrong way. Make sense? Okay. Losses of important relationships. One of the, that's the second um, cause. Separations, losses, rejections, and insecure attachments. Oftentimes, children of divorced parents, you can see, you can see an explicit behavioral change, and oftentimes, a lot of elementary school kids, middle school kids, and high school kids, when mom and dad are divorced, and people with a history of happy, secure attachment, the depression. But the mood disorder can come into play when there's a loss of a beloved partner. So, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, father, mother, uncle. And it's, hear, hear me on this. It's natural. It's natural to be depressed. It's not natural to stay depressed. Y'all with me? Big difference. It's okay. It's normal and natural to be depressed. To be angry. We're not supposed to stay there. Okay? Cognitive habits are just explanations that emphasize habits of thinking and ways of interpreting events. We can become depressed if we begin, begin to look at the world a particular way or we begin or we constantly are looking at ourselves a particular particular way. I'm never gonna be able to do it. I'm never gonna be able to do it. I'm never gonna be able to do it. I'm not talented enough. I did, I come from a bad neighborhood. Come from bad parents. My dad wasn't in my life. I'm just less than. I'm just less than. I'm just less than. The more cognitive, the the movie that you film, the movie that you tell yourself, the the stinking thinking, can definitely impact our our sense of well being. All right. Depressed people see that their situation is permanent and uncontrollable. Rumination. Ruminating means just, you just dwell. You just dwell on it. You nurse it and you rehearse it. You just continue to show the movie to yourself. Not good. Not good. And it's more common in women than it is men. Men, because traditionally we have been the workers, we gotta go work. We gotta go work, gotta keep moving. Got to keep it moving. The good thing about that is we got to keep it moving. The bad thing, it is, bad thing about it is we really don't deal with stuff. Yeah. Women, they deal with it sometimes just too much. And they just keep replaying the movie, replaying the movie, replaying the movie. And it's like, wait a minute. After you've processed, don't become enslaved to it. Deal with it. Everybody goes through the grieving process. And I'm not going to say Myra's grieving process should be eight months. The Maricela should be 18 months. No, we all grieve at different levels and ages and stages and so on and so forth. It's all individual. But here's the key. Remember what the mental disorder definition is. If you can't function optimally by yourself, on the job, and with others, and you're negatively or destructively impacting others around you, something. Okay? It's okay to be down for a minute. You're not supposed to stay there. Right? Anti-personality disorder. Personality disorders. Moving quickly, quickly. Personality disorders are maladaptive traits that cause great distress or an inability to get along with others. Narcissistic personality disorder. Does anybody know what being narcissistic means? Self-absorbed. And where do we get the word narcissistic from? Did I tell you about that? Did you? Good for you, man. Good. Good for you. That comes from the, the from from Greek mythology, where um, Narcissus fell in love with himself by looking at his reflection in the pond. Self-absorbed. Self-absorbed. So narcissistic. You think the world just dwells around you? Everything just has to be centered around you. Okay. Characterized by an exaggerated sense of self. Okay. 